Today uh, we are photographing our new specials for January at Moberry. It's a mango lassi and an always sunny bowl. Okay, first things first, I wanna break down the lighting and the setup for you. Uh, we're here, like I said, in my home office. I've got a cream backdrop set up. We're gonna make this yellow, but for now, cream will work as a, a nice base. Um, we've got that on the rollers on the wall, coming down on my table. We've got uh, our main light right here, a Godox AD200 with a umbrella and then a white um, diffusion material. And that's gonna give us the, the light most of the soft light and ambient exposure. What's gonna give us a little bit of pop and will give us some shininess on the blueberries. You'll see this, we have a little Amaran 60X. It's bicolor LED light. It's giving us just a little pop on all the smaller items like the blueberries and the agave it makes it kind of shiny. Without it, it looks kind of flat. Um, so we've got both these lights and then we've got a bounce. I didn't feel like setting up my bounce card so I just folded up some extra paper don't judge me, okay? And for the camera, we've got the Sony A7R3 with the 100 millimeter macro. And then we've got the, obviously the Godox receiver or transmitter to uh, trigger that light. And I've got it wirelessly tethered to the iPad. Um, you'll see the client kind of looking through this throughout the shoot. It's not like right on my back, just looking behind my camera. I'm gonna turn off these lights to show you. You'd actually be able to shoot this with just the window. Um, you can take a look at some of the B-roll shots. It looks kind of nice with just the window. The only problem with shooting with natural light is that it's not consistent. And if any of the cloud coverage moves, the white balance changes. There's just a lot of shifts that happen. So for consistency's sake, we shoot with strobes and an LED light. But if you don't have that, use a window or a big light source that's natural and you'll be fine. If you have any questions about the gear or the setup, let us know. But you can find all these links on Amazon. We don't have an affiliate program, sorry, but just Google it, you'll find it. And I wanna show you now the post-production side after the shoot. So we're gonna import, we're gonna edit, and then we're gonna design the poster for the campaign. Um, and that this will exist in person in front of the shop. So let's get to it. First things first, let's open up Lightroom. And here you'll see all the pictures we took of the shoot some of the test shots from earlier. And I've already gone through and three-starred the ones I like. I like to use the three-star system because it allows me to go up to five stars for the ones I'm gonna export. It allows me to go to, down to one star for the ones that I thought were good but didn't just, just didn't make the cut. So if I need to go back, I'll delete all the ones I never starred because they never even made the list in the first place. Um, that's just my way of doing it. You can do it a different way. Some people use a flag select, but I find it limiting because I don't wanna flag all of them because I don't wanna export all of them. Um, and sometimes I just wanna see what my backup options are. So those are my three stars. Um, so anyways, here we have the three stars. This is what it looks like right off camera. You'll see it's a little under, which is on purpose, um, and a little warm due to kind of the nature of the background and you'll see even just a little bit magenta. Um, so I went through and I have a preset that I call clean. And this clean looks really good for people and skin, you'll see it went from magenta to green, which is a little bit more comforting on the skin. There's a little bit of grain. I love this preset for people. Um, however, for products, it's not ideal because you'll notice the reds and the pinks move over a little bit to the yellow side and it just doesn't look good appetizing for food, but it looks great for skin because anyone with a red complexion, it kind of evens it out a little bit. So anyways, we're gonna make some adjustments uh, to the hue for the reds, we're gonna start off there. So like I said, this is a little too, too yellow. So we're gonna bring it down a little bit more to the magenta, nice. That feels a little bit more natural for a strawberry. And of course it's a little too saturated. So we're gonna reduce that. And the yellows are looking a little dark. So let's try popping that saturation and increasing the luminance. Yeah, I like that. And the hue for the yellows are still look, looking a little weird. Make some adjustments there. Yeah, make that a little bit more green, maybe a little less. And then coming back to the strawberries, I did something that messed it up, so. Sometimes I just go all the way to the extreme. But yeah, that feels about natural. Bananas look good. I'm going back and forth to make sure 
it's accurate. And then the luminance for the reds, I'm just going to bring down a little bit, looking a little too bright. Cool. Uh, and lastly, kind of before we, I want to show you what I ended up with, I'm going to bring up darks. And when I'm, I know I'm going to cut this out on Photoshop and I'm going to make a poster. Or I know it's going to be like clean cut. I'm going to bring up the lights here on the curve so that it's easier for me to cut and it looks better on white or on solid colors. And then I'm going to bring up the highlights. Same thing. I'm adding a little bit more contrast to the side of that bowl. And you'll see I go back and forth a lot. I, I use the, uh, the backslash key to see the original just to make sure my colors are accurate. And that's, a, I think, a lot, a, something a lot of you know, people miss when um, editing colors for food is how accurate they are. Uh, cool. Let's add a little bit more contrast. And this is feeling pretty good. You'll notice I'm not making any sort of edits to, I'm not retouching anything. You'll see like these bubbles here. There's a few things I'd like to retouch. I'm going to do all that on Photoshop. Not that I can't do it here. I just want to be very consistent with how it looks. Um, and I have a lot more control on Photoshop. Right now, I'm just doing basic exposures. I'm really taking advantage of the raw file and editing all the exposure and the um, colors, which is much easier to do in RAW, which I could do all this on Photoshop as well. With the clean preset, it just makes my job a little bit faster. So I've already made a preset for this one particularly, gone through and edited it. And here's kind of where it is. You'll see it's a little bit more cool and the colors are a little bit more vibrant. And you'll see why here in a second when I'm, I know this is going to be a print poster, CMYK, um, I make it a little bit more vibrant here on the export because once you print it out, it's going to be a little more dull. And so I kind of compensate for that here at the very beginning. Um, so now I know five stars are the ones I'm going to export. The bowl, I have both of them together. And I've got the Mango Lassie by itself. Um, this is feeling pretty good. Now I'm going to export these into a folder called First Export. And I'm going to open those up on Photoshop. But I want to show you here on the Mango Lassie what I do to make this ready for export or make this ready for a poster, okay? Um, the first thing I do is I make a copy. I do Command L. I just go to Levels. And what I want to do is I want to make the most contrast possible. You'll see why here in a second. You see that, that cup? I really want that cup to be very clear. Now, this looks really gross. So um, this is we won't be using this. Come here. The select subject tool is great, especially for simple uh, shapes like this. I'm just going to help it out here on the top. It's not going to be perfect. Okay, that works. And I'm going to come down here to background that's locked and I'm going to cut it out. Now, this looks pretty good already. Um, I just want to double check that this is good. Black background, put it in the back. And you'll see, ooh, there's some weird spots here. So what we're going to do is just clean up the weird spots. You could do the pen tool from the very beginning. Really, I mean, unless this project is going to be crazy, it's really not worth the time to do it just from scratch the entire time. So I'm just going to fix the pieces right here. I didn't like how that transitioned. With these shadows, the computer has a hard time reading it. So we're just going to... Selection, and let's see what we got here. Right there, perfect. And then L for lasso, select inverse brush, make this a little bit smaller. And I'm going to kind of cut this excess out. That transition is kind of a little wonky. And you'll see I use the backslash key here to see where the shape is, and then shift. I'm going to hide the mask so I know exactly where uh, this shape ends. Missed. Nice. I just like to look at it. That's just a preference. Kind of clean this. And I hit L, lasso. Oops. L, lasso. Select inverse, brush, and then X to do the opposite color. Very careful with the edge right there. Nice. 
and then Command D to deselect. And I'm really liking how this looks. Okay, so what's next is the shadow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, let's see if this shadow looks better. This shadow looks okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this and then and I'm gonna inverse this, copy it one more time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select color range and I'm gonna select the shadow right here. Sample colors, I'm gonna go down here, shadows. I like this. Okay, then we're gonna go to here, solid color. Let's do black just to be dramatic. And I'm gonna bring that shape over there. You can delete this copy. And this, I'm just gonna call the shadow. And that does obviously is so intense. Like, why is that so intense? Nice thing here is I can do multiply, you know, and make that as soft as I want it to be. So I've got you see, my shadow layer here, I've got my Mango Lassie file right here. And then the last thing I wanna do before I export this is I want to create a new layer and I obviously want to retouch anything that, re that needs to be retouched. So first, this looks like a hair. And so I'm just gonna use obviously the clone stamp tool and kind of clean this out. Obviously doing this a little bit quickly to show you. Just grabbing the layer above. Um, and I like these pieces right here of, uh, I think it's ice. Um, the only other adjustment I kind of want to make is that the color still seeming not kind of where I want it. So I'm gonna do retouch here. And so I'm gonna come, come up to here to hue saturation. And I'm gonna select this yellow, obviously. And I'm just gonna saturate it a little bit. I'm gonna come up here to master, increase the saturation. Oh, it's kind of tearing apart. You'll see like, yeah, the, the dynamic range on this file isn't ideal. So I'm gonna increase the brightness, the lightness of it. And so if that doesn't work, come up here to curves. And this is the next thing we wanna do regardless. So I'm just gonna make a layer mask, or sorry, I'm gonna make this what is that called? Um, okay, so I'm just gonna make this take the shape of it. It's the layer below. Um, and what I wanna do here is on the curves, we did this in Lightroom, but we wanna do it again here in Photoshop because the background was cream and not exactly white, which I do on purpose. It doesn't ever like look like it's in its full dynamic range. And so I increase the light and the brightness when I export on Lightroom and I do it again on Photoshop to give it a little bit more of a, of a poster feel, a little bit more realistic. And so I, you'll see here, obviously this is distorting the color, so I'm only doing lights and I bring it back down on the shadows. Obviously if this is too intense, you bring it down, but you'll see it's making the clear cup look a little bit more clear and I can bring this down. If you can't increase saturation, increase contrast. And it's actually a much more natural way to increase the vibrance of an object is to play with the tone curve than it is to physically increase the amount of colors. Because the problem isn't always that there isn't enough colors. It's usually that there isn't enough contrast. So I'm liking this color a lot. And if you take a look at a before and after, you see how much more vibrant that looks. I like that a lot. Um, and then actually this shadow right here, going a little too far. Kind of fade that as naturally as possible. Cool. Uh, this feels good. Um, and then now right before export, I'm gonna grab this, Command J to copy it, Command E to flatten it. And I'm going to sharpen this. Again, this is gonna seem kind of crazy because of um, like you wouldn't normally do this, but when it comes to print, any sort of sharpness you can add now, any sort of vibrance you can add now is gonna go a long way um, when it comes down on paper. So 
Let's go to Sharpen. Jeez, sorry. Smart Sharpen. Cool. And then the color will adjust once we get to the poster. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it black just so you can see it the most clearly. I'm gonna do this to the rest and I'll get back to you in a second. This is our client Moberry. We've done some campaigns for them, obviously. This is the Mango Specials. This is our mood board. This is so important for you to have before the shoot starts so you're not concocting an idea or missing anything during the shoot that you wanted to do for your final idea. You'll see I have a type saved. I have some screenshots from the show. You'll see I have some memes that I like, this one and this one in particular. Um, and you'll see this color that I pulled from one of their uh, later seasons, this yellow and obviously a more modern season to, uh, for the, of them drinking bleach. So I like this yellow, I'm gonna pull this yellow, and I like this type uh, called Lucida Big. Um, I like this type and I like this like old feel, I like the feeling of this, um, these seasons, these first original seasons, kind of a digitized, old school, simple, and lo-fi look. So I wanna capitalize on that. So you'll see what I did here is, for it's, the, it's always Sunny Bowl right there. Um, and I've already kind of done this, but you'll see here, I already have the type set where I want it in general. Like I have a good idea of where I want it and the color I want. Uh, you have the client logo, all that stuff. I had that ready beforehand. And here's some old ones or some previous ones we've done. This is the summer specials we did this year. The Ube Bowl with some graffiti type, pumpkin spice. So I just had them all on one board so I can get an idea of what they look like. But anyways. Because I had the inspiration already ready, um, now it's time to implement this. I'm going to do the final thing on Illustrator for the print purposes, but to get it ready for Illustrator, I'm going to make it in Photoshop just to make sure it looks good. So we're going to open up Photoshop here, and you'll see I have the yellow option, and I've got the meme option, meme being like for the digital aspect of it, and this yellow being for the print aspect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this color, this yellow that I like, And I'm gonna bring this over to my file right here. And the only thing I'm really gonna do is make sure that it looks good in yellow. And as we guessed, it looks phenomenal in yellow. So the only thing that I don't really like the way that it looks is the shadow. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up kind of what the shadow looks like. Um, let's make it something a little bit more easy to see. Okay. So we're going to kind of mask out to the areas we don't want necessarily. Cool. Kind of feather that, feather that in. Same thing with this. I think that works. Um, cool. Okay, so let's come up with a more realistic shadow. We're going to select the yellow and we're just going to go down. That works, I think. Maybe a little bit darker. Now you'll notice here, I'm not using any sort of, um, I'm not using any sort of adjust, <clears throat> or I'm not using any sort of like, uh, what are these called? Like multiply, I'm not using multiply or anything because I need this to be a solid color when exporting to Illustrator or it won't show up. Especially as a PNG, it won't show up well. The multiply effect doesn't show up. So I need it to be a solid color and that's why I'm doing um, a solid color layer here. Okay, cool. I'm really happy actually with how this looks. Okay, last thing I wanna do is I'm going to grab this yellow and what I'm going to do is on this, do final export, label this right here, shadow. <clears throat> the last thing I wanna do here is I'm gonna start a new layer and I'm gonna do yellow. Reflections. All I'm really looking to do is I'm looking to make it look like the background was yellow. Um, and so to do this, um, when you have a yellow background basically or any colored background on an item, it'll inevitably reflect on the item. And so it's very clear and very obvious when you grab something that, that has a white background, put it on a different colored background because there's white reflections on what is a yellow background, which is strange. And you can kind of see that here. If you look at it long enough, you'll see like, Obviously, white is reflecting on this and making that be lighter. Um, and that wouldn't be the case with yellow. It would be a yellow reflection. So to kind of fool your eye and make it seem more um, natural looking, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this gradient. And I'm just going to kind of randomly grab uh, this. And I'm just going to kind of like grab this yellow, kind of bring it in. Right here, um, I'm gonna use a brush to kind of do it here. Especially here with the, these clear parts. Um, this isn't gonna be the obviously what it looks like in the final, but you can get a little like crazy with it. Same thing down here would we'll be reflecting it down here. You're just looking for all the places where it looks a little too white. Um, and that's also why, again, I don't use white, uh, p clean white or pure white because it's so reflective that it usually peaks or it, um, it'll it overexpose those small areas and the camera doesn't catch it. And then later on, I realized there's no information there. Cream, what we use, it's a little bit harder to peak in those areas. So grab the yellow reflections, which is great. And I'm going to do soft light, usually works well. Let's see, and then I'm gonna do this right here. Let's just kind of go through hard light, pin light, that's looking pretty nice. Hue, saturation. Okay, pin light, I think I've used pin light before. Hmm, pin light, vivid light, soft light overlay. Kind of like soft light. Let's see how that looks. Not bad. Um, I just don't like the way obviously it looks here. So let's erase some of this. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, just bringing in some yellow and what would be... Uh, just white looking stuff. And the nice thing about having this be a separate layer is if I do end up needing a white background, I can just take this, I can just take this uh, 
layer off and export it again. So I'm gonna do that right here. A bit more right there, nice, I like that. Love the way this is turning out. Okay, cool. So we've got those reflections. Now let's take a look at what this would look like. And I think this is a little too intense down here. A little too intense. Cool. Now let's see what this would look like if I tried doing this on a black background. You'll notice that there's yellow reflections on what's a black background, which is obviously unnatural because this is, um, even if you took, took out the shadow, you can kind of tell like there's no black reflections on this. But if I were to make this color black, Obviously this is crazy, you know, this is too intense. This is a little bit more likely, right? It's a little, it feels like it would be kind of there because that black is casting a shadow on the item. This is a bad example, but it kind of shows you the effect that this has. Let's clear this effect um, and make this yellow again. What do we do, soft light? Great, okay, so this is a color I like. I'm happy with how this is turning out. Um, let's pull the background and let's export this as a PNG. Or actually, let's just grab this, this, and J right here. Final export. Cool, let's move over to Illustrator. And like I said, I already have this ready and I have the previous ones up. Just a reference here, nice. Let's see, let's see. <sighs> that looks perfect. Okay, so let's kind of scale this to where we need it. Feels about right. Now, uh, there's, it's not obviously perfectly centered because the shadow and it kind of messes up. So what I like to do is I like to grab a shape that takes up kind of the dimensions of the products. Let's change the color on this. Reduce the opacity so I can see under it. Um, and then I like to just proportion it there. So I've got this in the middle. If I want that in the middle, then I need to move this linked file over. So that, there is probably a better way to do this, and you, but it's just tough with the shadow because it always makes it not like perfectly, uh, it's not perfectly symmetrical uh, when you export. So this is looking really good to me, honestly. I mean, obviously this is a little dark, but should be fine. Um, but I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I do think it's a little small. So now that I know it's perfectly centered, I can just proportionately increase the size, great. And then this is obviously gonna be, not need to be moved again, so I'm gonna lock that. And Perfect, let's grab this mango lassie. I've already introduced. This is easy right here. Mango specials, and this is the type, um, again, that we saw in our mood board. It's always sunny. I downloaded the um, Lucida font, and that's kind of the, the look we're going for. The only other thing, it looks a little clean, which is fine. In this season, it looked clean. It just doesn't look messy. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can catch the reference. Hmm. Let me, let me dirty, dirty this up a little bit, okay? Don't judge me. I'm gonna dirty this up. I think the, oh, the last thing they wanted to add is, I'm gonna copy this. On the, from the previous one and I'm going to they wanted to make sure that we knew that this is vegan. So let's make that a little bit smaller. That works. Let's make sure this is proportionate. Boom, boom. Vegan. Uh, Hmm. 
got an idea. I've got an idea here. Uh, so here's what I'm gonna do. First of all, this background is great. Effect, texture. Let's add some gray. Okay. We have some grain. I'm happy with that. I think it's the black that's throwing me off. Yeah. I like that. Not exactly black. And lastly, what I need to do is this linked file effect, apply some grain on it. Nice. Yeah, that feels a little bit more flat, which I like. Now, these are Photoshop, these are like rasterizing effects, uh, which is fine. Um, I always mess this up. This is never all one color. So frustrating. Okay, I'm happy with this. This I think is something the client will like. Um, only thing I forgot to add was the pricing. So let's see how we've structured pricing down here. Listen, if you've made it this far in the video, congratulations. Award for you. I wanted to show you what all that work looks like in person. So here you'll see kind of like the posters outside we've done. We actually, we did all of this, but for now we'll focus on this. Uh, let's go look at the poster inside. Okay, that's it. From idea to print, that's what it looks like. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something. Please subscribe uh, and like this video if you can. Peace.